you're watching us here on the Weekender on CNBC TV 18. Now, one of the most celebrated uh, appointments in the FMCG space in the last one year has been that of Pratha Narsimhan moving from Hindustan Unilever to Colgate. She completes one year at the helm and we find out what the future holds. Congratulations, it's been one year at the helm. How has the year been? Uh, thank you very much, Mangalam, and it's a pleasure to see you. Um, looking back, I've been actually in quite a reflective mood, as you can imagine, over the last uh, week, 10 days. And I think overall, it's been a fantastic year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's truly a privilege to run a company with the quality of people and the quality of brands that I have the privilege to run. Uh, it's been a great learning experience. Colgate is the most penetrated FMCG brand, not just a oral care brand. It's available in 9 out of 10 homes in this country at an annual level. This is the company's 86th year in this country. So it's been a part of the fabric of this country. And now as I meet people, I, every time they see me and like, what do you do? Oh, I work for Colgate. They'll be like, oh, I grew up with Colgate. I use Colgate. You know, I love Colgate. And, and that's really the, the power of this brand. Why is it that people aren't using it as much? Category growth has been so slow. You are absolutely right and certainly over the last year or so, uh, category growth has been sluggish. Uh, I think the job that we have to do is to communicate to consumers in a better fashion how actually critical oral care is for your overall health. Our ability to communicate that and drive the oral care habit uh, is something that's a big agenda for us. Have you seen increased sales in areas where you've activated these uh, programs? So, uh, firstly, Mangalam, you'll realize that moving consumer behavior, especially on consumption, actually mm -hmm. is slow, it's hard, and it takes time. Yes. One of the key activities that this company has done and done quite successfully, which drives uh, both penetration, which has been super successful, getting it to near universal, and consumption to a letter, lesser extent, though, is the Bright Smiles, Bright Future program. Yes. So, we reach out to school children of the formative age and talk about dental health, oral awareness, you know, uh, prevention of tobacco consumption, all these good healthy habits, uh, and hope to build a habit that they will then carry home. However, as we are now thinking about how the world has evolved and how extremely critical it is, both from a consumer health perspective and for the health of our business perspective, we are looking to amp up what we do in terms of driving oral care. And so shortly you will see much more that we are doing to build healthy oral care consumption habits uh, in the coming few months. Yes, everyone learns it. But eventually, and you, you're saying that every household, nearly every household in the country has a toothpaste and a toothbrush. Why is it that they are not using it? If you talk to urban consumers and you ask them how many times a day should you brush, the answer is usually two. Yeah, so everybody knows it. Yes. It's a belief that exists. However, I don't think there is clarity on the so what of not doing it. Okay. Uh, and I think therefore, just a little bit of nudge in that direction would help. From a rural consumer's perspective, they have a substitute, uh, which is the use of datun or, you know, neem sticks or any of those other things. And I think it's really our job to convince them in terms of why using a toothpaste and a toothbrush is really better for your oral health and that's really the work that we're doing. Lots of inciting work that's happening which I'm unfortunately not at liberty to share uh, but there are reasons and we will find them. I have come down to your office. You have to share a little more <laughs> than you know, uh, uh, what you are at liberty to. Um, if you could just for the benefit of our viewers break down your revenue in terms of how much you get from oral care. In oral care, how much do you get from toothpaste and how much is toothbrushes and the palm oil part of it, if you could break that down for us. So, uh, the bulk of our business is toothpaste and we tend not to share exact figures, but really the bulk of our business is toothpaste. We have a very, very strong toothbrush business where we are actually the market leaders in mm -hmm. toothbrush as well. Uh, and we have, to be honest, a tiny palm olive business, a business that I would dearly love to make bigger and it is one of our key priorities. And that becomes really the fourth pillar of our strategy that I'm sure you've heard many times. So, let's revise those uh, four pillars. One is... Uh, holding your market share, growing it. Secondly, increased uh, use cases in the uh, rural areas and the urban areas as well. The third case is premiumization where people are buying better toothpaste, better toothbrushes and, you know, buying it a lot more frequently. And the fourth one is palm olive. That's correct, right? Yeah, you could do my job, Mangal. 
I would love to. You know, <laughs> but, but last ten years, sales CAGR for Colgate has been just five percent. How do you plan to structurally change that? You are absolutely right that over the last decade or so, the performance of the company has been, you know, in the four five percent category. Lots of things that have happened. There was an entire wave of naturals that came. Mm. Uh, we are seeing that wave plateau and the naturals. Segment, if you want to call it a, a segment, uh, also plateauing, and we think that there's a real opportunity for Colgate to double down on what Colgate is good at, which is really this whole idea of strong science built into each of our products, which deliver really good efficacy. Let's raise a cup to that, and uh, that's our coffee cup. Talking about penetration, can you break that down for us? I mean, what proportion of your portfolio is entirely penetrated and which of them are under penetrated and there you see more headroom for growth so i think firstly uh, if you take a look at total toothpaste and total toothbrush nearly 100 yeah okay. then our mm. most penetrated brand would be strong teeth would yes. would be in the ballpark of you know 6 7 out of 10 households mm. uh, and therefore if you see that's our strongest and largest brand and that is the strongest and largest brand in the oral care category you see automatically the extent of headroom that you have in all of the other offerings and that's exactly why this whole idea or the second pillar of driving premiumization becomes so much more important because there is so many there are so many value added benefits that we can give consumers in oral care what we need to do is to convince them that that truly does deliver a benefit to them what you've done with uh, you know uh, artificial intelligence in the stores that you reach and with your assortments all of that has caused a delta of almost 20 to 30% to your sales in those particular stores how much of a headroom do you see there Actually, we see tremendous headroom there because, as you know, we reach about 1.7 million stores, uh, yes. which is, I think, the greatest direct reach, uh, or it's certainly comparable to pretty much any other company's uh, direct reach. But the trick is to make sure that we have the right SKUs in those 1.7 million stores, and the Smile Stores algorithm mm. that you refer to does exactly that because it does tell us that you know a multiplex has come up nearby, there's a mall there, there's a new college there, which means that there are a lot of young adults in that. We see it so it gives us all of those indicators which then feeds into what should be the assortment in that store so the headroom on that while we will not see i think huge assortment numeric increase because you can't keep on adding yes. i mean where retailers must sell things other than to paste and to brush uh, what you will see is the quality of assortment driving growth and on that one i think we have massive headroom versus what was happening in the company before you came and going forward how much of that will be more of the same and how much of that will be new i think uh, a lot of it is really on a continuum because these are businesses like i said this is our 86th year in the country and the foundation that we've been given uh, today has been rock solid so it is on a continuum what we want to turbocharge though is the speed of executing some of these things so smile stores is one of them we also have a similar ai technology for merchandising which takes a photograph of the shelf and then tells you you know share of shelf right level of planogramming what's the secondary asset uh, you know the placement and all of that that's done real time so the speed is what we're trying to move similarly we're trying to move speed in terms of adopting digitization in the business process so we've adopted a, a machine learning forecasting tool to help us you know generate numbers for forward quarters we're working on a project to digitize the end to end supply chain so it's just a question of us saying this is something that we get to do uh, it's great there's so much tech out there there are so many partners out there and can we do it faster that's really the idea rather than saying you know are we going to be fundamentally different so let, let let's uh, talk cricket because i know you're a big big cricket fan and uh, use that energy on colgate as well a common grouse that a lot of people on the street have with colgate is uh, assume this is a t20 match at the 12th over both your opening batsmen are still on the pitch and they've made about 120 odd runs the problem is they're still staying taking singles they're not hitting sixes as one would like them to do in a game so i think if i may modify your analogy just a little bit yeah. i think business and life is more of a test match than it is a t20 okay. game and it is really about us saying that are we getting better with every passing day than we were the previous day and therefore are we moving forward because i i would love an organization that gets steadily better 
continuously rather than an organization that does these you know i have one over where i'm able to score 25 runs and the next over is a two run over uh, that i think to me i'm is, sure there are a few bowlers that you would like to target and just get more than 8 10 runs even if it's a test match absolutely and therefore steadily getting better where your win percentage is get better and better uh, is really the organization that we would like to build because of course we want to be here 86 years later as well so that's kind of more our thinking and our analogy rather than can we do something that is if i may flash in the pan so tell me the bowlers that you're targeting <laughs> uh so i think we have a significant opportunity across the board we're really lucky in that the first word in oral care in this country as in many other countries is colgate uh and therefore we have a platform on which we can target pretty much anything that we want to target and uh our focus is to make sure that in every segment of relevance to consumers where we believe we have a right to win we will have an offering there and that offering becomes a legitimate so the people who have comparable offerings become then a legitimate target for us to take on how much have innovations contributed to your overall sales how much do you think they will be a part of your overall sales going forward so innovation is an absolutely key agenda for two reasons one because we are like i said you know we are discovering that whitening for example is a highly sought consumer benefit it is in fact the most searched term on google on anything oral care huge opportunity there and there's a huge opportunity for us to innovate in that segment so if you look outside of this country whitening penetration in this country is 1% or 2% in that ballpark whitening in the us is 43% even in southeast asia it's in the 20s so and there is opportunity for us to the comment that you made earlier to do more than toothpaste and toothbrush there are whitening devices we've just least recently launched the whitening pen which you would have seen innovation whether it be on our existing brands or innovation whether it be on the new brands uh, will be a consistent focus for this company let's talk about your margins now they're the highest in the industry by far between 29 to 32% of the last many years even if they were to go down by 300 to 400 basis points they will still be the highest in the industry so how about taking some of the ebitda margins and using that to invest in growth what the margins yeah. indicate is that this is a really strong brand that has pricing power in the market because of the quality that it de- delivers to consumers so it's not something that we are feeling uh, oh my god you know we have these kind of margins on to your comment which i think is underlying do we adequately fund our growth i think mm-hmm. the answer to that is an unequivocal yes everything that we see as an opportunity we are fully funding and as we see more opportunities we are committed to funding those as well because really the single agenda for this company is for us to drive top line growth this is a fabulously exciting market we have significant consumption head room uh, we are the market leaders and you know the first word in oral care or the last word in oral care as the, as the case may be and we have like you said the pnl to support growth so really it is growth is our primary motivator and we will not be found wanting in funding it the last couple of quarters we've seen early green shoots of some of the strategies that you've implemented as well could you define what are the three or four key changes you've made to the organization since the time you've joined so i think like i said mangalam everything is really on a continuum but the things that we've doubled down our focus on is first really product superiority hmm. and i think that for me is the fundamental cornerstone of an fmcg business that you must deliver to consumers a product that they perceive to be superior the second part of our thinking is to do advertising that is more cut through and that makes people take notice of the category so in a cluttered environment we do need to get attention and the joy of having a brand like this is if you create good advertising thing then you get a truly multiplier effect then the third pillar for us is to leverage our fabulous reach the 1.7 million exactly. stores that we discussed and to put the right sku into the right store so even on a brand like colgate strong teeth which is really the most distributed oral care brand as you would imagine being the largest share we've still found headroom opportunity to get our assortment up and with this relaunch we've managed to increase our assortment by about a quarter so about 25% or so just by saying you know can we get mid pack into stores that don't have mid packs can we make the 20 rupee which is a, a growing segment more available and things like that the combination of these three things i think is what is coming to bear and starting to show these early results and the market share it seems to have stabilized after a big decline that we saw over the last many years do you have plans to um, you know claw back to those historical levels and we want to deliver competitive ahead of market growth and which we hope will start reflecting more consistently in the market share that we deliver as well the max fresh range that you have you know 
it can stand for a lot more than just a toothpaste, right? There are multiple categories. I see just off the top of my head, there are other brands who do mouth strips. Uh, they do something like a mouthwash. They do uh, mouth sprays. So it can stand for the larger freshness positioning than just a toothpaste. Is, is, is there a possibility? Can we hear something? Can I just say, Mangalam, that I fully agree with you yeah. and watch this space for a bit. So mouth sprays, uh, strips so and lots of things. That lots and lots do. of things. The active salt portfolio. I see salt. I see neem. I see clove. I see turmeric. Uh, lemon. I see lemon. I think if you add uh, onion, ginger and some rice, it becomes a biryani there. I, I, I swear. What are the other what are the other ingredients that you're seeding? Actually, our strategy is not about ingredients, biryani aside. Uh, <laughs> our strategy is about saying where can we marry the idea of what consumers believe because the most used ingredient for gum or dental care in India is actually salt. Okay. To your comment and you missed charcoal which nowadays is in biryani as well sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, but similarly on charcoal, uh, the it's long held belief. But the combination of what charcoal does in the formula is really what we want to get at. And, and that's going to be our thinking going forward. So let's talk about, say, the company growing at X. What are the categories that you believe will grow at 2X? What are the categories that you believe will grow at 3X? So I think our biggest opportunity, oral care, obviously, is such a large part of our business that when oral care grows at X, the company grows at X. Yeah, that's uh, right. mathematically simple. And we, uh, what we're pushing for is for that X to be faster than market growth, so competitive growth. Aside from that, we have an opportunity, significant opportunity in personal care where we want to play in cleansing and with the palm olive brand. And we do expect that that would grow at least two times as fast as the company. And as we've discussed in the past, there's opportunity globally. Colgate has a much larger portfolio than we have in India. And there's opportunity for us to consider what else of the global portfolio could have relevance in this country. What are the categories that you believe are missing in India from what is there in the global portfolio? There are lots of things that we could do and uh, I'm sorry to do the I'm not at liberty piece again. But, That's uh, no fun. <laughs> because, yeah, sadly. I mean, you can name few. We, we don't want specific. I think so, like globally, for example, Colgate plays in skin care, they play in skin cleansing, they play in home care, across dishwash, across... Uh, fabric cleaning, about fabric conditioners. So they play in an awful lot of categories which have a very high relevance to this country. Okay. Inorganic opportunities. You have said multiple times that's high on your list of priorities. Um, how close are we to any formidable announcement here? Just wanted to understand that. So we are uh, we're in conversation uh, with a lot of people. We're always in the lookout for uh, organic opportunities and as and when, you know, something is at fruition point, uh, we will certainly come back to you. That's uh, the standard stock market answer. And now, is, give me a more candid answer in the sense that, okay, you're not marrying that person yet, but there is courtship. At this moment, uh, there are a lot of exciting options. There's a lot happening in the market. There are a lot of exciting options out there. Let me leave it at that. One year, Prabha, you've got to show me around this beautiful office. Let's do that while we have a more fun conversation. Let's do it. Sounds All fun. Right. Your dad, Unilever veteran. Your uncle, PNG veteran. You have been at Unilever for almost two decades dabbled in every category possible and now Colgate. How did that happen? I mean, what are the conversations in your house like? So I think one of the things is that you certainly get to try a lot of products. Because <laughs> anything that gets launched comes home and a lot of things used to get launched. So I, I really enjoyed that. I think the other interesting thing was conversations about how fun work was when it was fun and how much pressure there was when it wasn't. So give me a sense of what? Colgate's perception was when you were in HUL because I remember that big brand fight that used to always happen between Tepsid and Close Up and Colgate and Max Fresh and all of that and stuff. What was HUL's perception then? So I think when, as you look at Colgate from the outside, whether it's from HUL or from anywhere else, what you see is a company that obviously is a leader in this category. Uh, and I think what you also see is just the power of the of the Colgate brand. And it's always fun to take on a formidable competitor. What do you think was the fresh perspective that you brought from an outside the category perspective than um, 
you know what an insider would have done according to you i think more than anything else is just a perception of what is the headroom that this category has to grow and we did have a conversation about it in terms of there is so much that even a category like oral care with near universal penetration that has been around for such a long time uh, can do when you were at hul uh, you handled the pnl of roughly 15000 crores yep. right colgate is around one third that size right now by the time you end your term and hopefully that's a long one you hope to take it to that pnl at least well, that would be certainly a really good outcome so the analyst just make their models just trying to understand <laughs> well i'm new i've done exactly what a day short of a year so we'll see how it goes double digit revenue growth is that on the cards Actually like I said growth is absolutely our number one mantra and competitive growth is our mantra I don't want to put a number or a range on it I I gather you are very competitive as a person aren't you Indeed Indeed right what, what sports do you play and watch Uh I watch cricket I'm a big fan uh, but I play badminton uh, just socially still competitive but socially By the way I'm wearing a blue jacket you're wearing a yellow dress uh, uh, that speaks about the loyalties i am a mumbai indians fan you are a csk fan so you went through i want to take a step back now el clasico <laughs> mumbai indians has won the recent uh, new york premier mm. league that happened we won that uh, the women's premier league we won that a uh, couple of champions trophies that we won so obviously we have one up on you well i'm going to give you that just for the moment but then the proof of the pudding will be in next year's ipl all right let's do this and i have something special planned for oh. you right now these are a couple of questions that i have related to cricket and your business itself all right let's do it three things that cricket has taught you about management um i think firstly it's all about teamwork it's never about one player uh i think secondly winning is fun um you got to keep honing your skills and get better and better every day i'll talk about some of your brand names and you have to liken them to cricketers colgate strong teeth i think dhoni just dependable always there uh, thoughtful uh, does the right thing colgate max fresh uh, virat kohli just the energy of it active salt maybe a shubman gill upcoming has serious potential colgate totals that i would say dravid that you would say dravid mm-hmm. huh? visible white who would that be so i think visible white couple days uh because i think he's just the embodiment as i was growing up of personality plus performance which the brand is about as well i thought you would save kapil dev for the one that i'm going to ask you right now because of the iconic pamolev da jawab nahi line right no but i have a better answer for pamolev i think what is the answer for pamolev i think smriti mandana oh smriti mandana just from a perspective of fabulous awareness and we are all waiting to see what she will do what about the professional uh Uh, you know category that you have periogard yes periogard Indian. okay so periogard would be who i think maybe um, i would say harsha bogle oh Just wow from a knowledgeable uh, sound uh, and really i am a big fan if you had to liken the entire colgate organization right now under you which international cricket team would you liken it to Well, my, I think I'm going to answer this one with my heart rather than my head. So I hope that the Colgate organization is like the Indian cricket team. It brings together the best of India. Uh, I think it does the best for India, and there's a real sense of pride. Yes, and that brings me to my last and final question about cricket, business, and life for you, um, Prabha. When Sachin retired, the stat that stood with him was 664 games and 100 international centuries. When Don Bradman retired, the stat that stood with him. is 99.94 the cricket average dhoni retired the stat of being the most successful captain that india has had uh, what do you think would be the stats that define you or should be the stats that define you when you leave colgate Actually, I must confess, I don't think of life in terms of stats. Never have, and uh, what I would love to do is to leave this place better than I found it. All right, I would have still thought of some numbers, but you did extremely well, and I've got you a small little present. Oh, and I'm- This is from my personal collection. 1971 was when the Indian cricket team won against England in England and against West Indies in West Indies. So this is a book that uh, captures the tales of that particular year for Indian Test cricket. Thank you so very much. And that is my uncle there on the cover. Oh, that's your uncle? Who yes, then? Venkat Raghavan. Wow, I didn't yeah, know that. Exactly. That's incredible. So, so you have is. to get this signed by your uncle for yourself as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabha. This was Thank a you. pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Mangalam.